Uh, welcome to our fourth quarter uh, history community workshop. The principal topic is uh, Vinch's postcards. And the real reason for this uh, presentation, the, the, the overall writing, overriding goal is uh, how a uh, one of our sister societies can improve uh, membership, uh, volunteers, and uh, attendance at uh, their exhibits through the use of uh, vintage postcards. So that's our goal, really, to get more visibility and membership to our societies. And we think this is one way that's worked very well for uh, some of us in uh, who you're going to hear today from uh, today. So um, we're going to start off with David Turner. I'm going to ask him to introduce himself and a little bit about his background and then get into a brief background about the, the of, uh, vintage postcards. Then Diane from Beacon, uh, Mike from Rhinebeck, myself from Clinton, Bill Jeffway from the uh, County Historical Society. And then we're going to finish with David Turner and uh, what he's going to share with us as far as his collection, as well as what uh, response he's gotten from the many audiences for the many present presentations uh, he's given. They're really great. They're always well represented. And then we'll go into a Q&A for any uh, unanswered questions and uh, maybe have a discussion about ways we could collaborate and share our, our collections uh, for those who would like to get more involved. So each of uh, us uh, in their turn will talk about acquiring the postcards and the images, cataloging and preserving them, displaying them, and uh, using the images for local history research and education. And then we'd like to share some uh, success stories. Um, that postcard session will be followed by an open discussion and uh, any announcement that uh, any of you would uh, like to make. So I'm going to stop screen sharing and turn the meeting over to uh, David. Please give us your background, David. Hello, David. Probably be a bit easier if I unmute myself. Um, <laughs> Dave Turner, uh, I've been collecting for about 20 years since I was a kid. Um, I have about, I don't know, 5,000 different views of Dutchess County, all different corners of it. Uh, I'm also a postcard dealer. You can see my postcard stock actually set up here in my office. I have about 12,000 items on eBay selling from all over the world. Um, so yeah, I love collecting postcards, photographs, stereo views. Uh, everything from about the 1850s to about the 1930s is what I look for. And um, I click the entire Hudson Valley, um, but I like to focus on Dutchess County. It's where I grew up. It's where I live now. I live in Beacon. Um, I've met many of you. Uh, for everyone else, hello. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief history of postcards. I'm going to share my screen right now. Let's see. Share. Slide. Hopefully everyone can see this. Yes. Um, so I'm going to have a couple of different topics. Uh, I could go further back for the history of postcards, you know, pine, uh, pioneer cars, Grusaus, so German cards. But for the most part, these are going to be the types of cards that uh, are going to be represented in Dutchess County. Uh, starting with postal cards, private mailing cards, undivided back, divided back, real photo, white border, linens, and chromes. So we're going to start with postal cards. These date from about the 1860s to about the 1920s. And there are um, two, mostly two different topics in it. Uh, the one on the left uh, is from Middletown. These kinds of cards um, either gave a receipt for a payment or a bill that uh, needs to be covered. So you can see here it's dated uh, 1883, and it's just saying that they have received the payment of $2 for uh, whatever uh, printing job they needed done. This is the back of the card below it. You can see the postmark. It doesn't have the year on it. Luckily it was filled out on the front. Um, no stamp was used. Usually these were purchased um, and uh, the stamp was already in the purchase price. So you can see it's postmarked with a hand stamp. On the right over here, this is an advertising card um, for ham and slug shots here at Beacon. Um, 
It's dated on the back. It's actually postmarked. You can see it's 1890, I believe it's 1895. And these are the oldest cards that you'll find of Dutchess County. And as again, they'll either be advertising cards uh, sent out to local businesses for them to purchase your product or um, a receipt for a bill paid. And these are interesting cards. Um, as I said, they're older than most postcards and they um, kind of show the businesses that were around at the time. Next, we have the private mailing cards. And you'll be able to distinguish these from the back. They usually say private mailing cards. Some of them say souvenir card. Uh, these are gonna be the oldest uh, images uh, for postcards in the area. The one on the left is of uh, Cold Spring. The one on the right is for uh, Fishkill and Beacon. Um, they date from about 1898 to 1904. Uh, these are very collectible because they're very hard to find. They didn't really make too many of these of uh, Dutchess County, uh, but they are scattered out throughout the county. Interesting to have two for one cent. So you can buy two of these postcards for one cent, uh, which seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, interesting, it also says it's copyrighted 1902, which is the first year that the Beacon Incline actually started. Moving on to the undivided back. Now these are called undivided backs because the back of the card was only for the address. So you can see over here on the bottom left, it says this side for the address. So you weren't allowed to write a description or a note on the back that had to be saved for the front. So I included one that was actually sent and you can see the person wrote uh, a description of, or a, a note on the right side of the card and the back of the card was only for the address. And these cards date from about 1905 to 1907. So just after the private mailing cards and the beginning of really the postcard craze. The postcard craze, they, uh, or the golden age of postcards starts about 1906 and goes to about 1915. And that's where millions and millions of these cards were published. So we're gonna move on to the divided back era, which is about 1907 to 1918. You can see on the back of the card, there's a line down the middle. So you could use the left side to write a note and the right side to put the address. And these were very popular because it allowed the entire card to have a picture on it instead of having a white border on the side for you to write a note. So this is a beautiful printed card that has been color colorized. Um, you can see on the back, uh, it was made in Germany. And a lot of these cards at the time were printed in Germany. They had the best printing techniques. So a lot of these cards would be printed in uh, numbers about 500 to about 1,000 cards. So these are more common um, than your real photo cards, which we'll go through later. But um, they're very much in desire because, as I said, it takes up the entire card. The one on the right uh, is another divided back card. This is printed in the United States down in New York. Uh, it does have a white border here, but it is not a white border card. Um, I'll show you those in a little bit, uh, but again, divided back, line down the middle, uh, one spot for uh, your note and the other side for the address. Okay, we're going to move on to real photo cards. These are the most desired by collectors and are usually uh, much harder to find. The one on the left was done by an amateur photographer. So these were done in very limited numbers. Um, Sometimes just one view was made. This is probably about five or 10 different views of this uh, building were made up in Quaker Hill. Uh, divided back again on the back. Uh, the one on the right was uh, published by uh, a local store. So you'll see that it actually has the title, J.H. Uh, Ketchum's House in Dover Plains. Um, these would have been sold in a general store or um, maybe a hardware store or something like that. So there would have been uh, maybe about a hundred of different of these uh, made uh, for the general public. So they're much harder to find, um, really good resolution in these uh, photographs. So they're very desirable by collectors um, and can go upwards of $100 a piece in this area. And I just wanted to give you a a little bit of a lesson about how to date postcards. You can see the different stamp boxes here. This is a Psycho card, and this is a Crookso card. And excuse me while I just bring up this. So there is a website called playly.com that gives you an idea of how to date old postcards. So we have a Psycho uh, back on this. So you can look on your list 
And as you go down here, Psycho, so you can date it from between 1904 to 1920. Over here, we have a Cruxo card. So we go down the list again, and we have two Cruxos. One has X's in the corners. These have crosses. So it would be date from between 1907 to 1920s. This is a really good resource. I can have this sent out to everybody to really uh, give it a good idea of how to date your postcards. Okay, let me go back. Also wanted to just mention cyanotype real photo cards. Um, I really like to collect these types of cards. Uh, they were made in very small numbers, usually by amateur photographers, but in Millerton, a uh, postcard publisher actually did a whole series of the town and they're uh, characterized by their blue tint. Uh, it's just a different way to develop the cards. Uh, even if they get a little bit of washed out, you can put them in a dark area for a while and it'll actually darken the image again. Um, they're really done by mostly amateur photographers, as I said. So if you find one, they're usually pretty hard to find. This is a great, um, over the years, I've actually found about five different views sent by the same person at different times. Uh, he always gives a very nice description of where he is in Millerton and what he's doing. Um, so I'm always looking for uh, photos by, or cards sent by this one sender. And uh, with real photo cards, you know, there's a lot of value in them. So you do find some reproductions in them as well. So you have to be careful of uh, spending too much money on a reproduction. So these are two different railroad views that I have. One is of Cokertown, New York, which is near Red Hook. And the other one is Chicamico, which is uh, up near Millerton and Pine Plains. And they look like old photographs, especially this one on the left. It even has like that uh, sepia tint to it. But if you look on the back, you can see that they have uh, Kodak stamp boxes. So this image is probably from about 1910. The one on the right is dated 1932, also has a Kodak stamp box. But if we go over to our dating our postcards again and look down, Don't you, see can, that. you can see Kodak here. And it says it's made from the 1950s to now. So you can tell that these are reproduction cards. Um, they don't hold the same value as a real photo card uh, that would be from that date. But these are also the only images I've ever found of the railroad station in Cokertown and Chicamico. So even though they're reproduction cards, they still have some value um, for showing these uh, images that you don't see. And they're the only images that I can find of these towns. So even though the reproductions are still desirable, but just uh, you know, be aware. We're moving on to the white border area, uh, era, which is uh, between 1918 and the 1930s. These are characterized by their white border along the sides. As I stated before, a lot of these cards were uh, made during, uh, or made uh, from prints sent out to Germany because they were the best printers. But after World War I, production moved back to the United States and England. So, um, they made a, a little bit more inferior type of printed cards. Um, that being said, they're still very collectible. They're harder to find. This is after the postcard craze. So uh, fewer people were buying and sending postcards. So they're uh, less in circulation. Uh, they're usually pretty brightly colored. Um, town views usually show some, uh, show some type of automobile to show uh, how prosperous your town was at the time. Uh, back of the card you can see here, it's uh, split down the middle, still divided back, uh, but it's printed in Newburgh, New York. The one on the right is a little bit later of a white border card, probably the 1930s. Uh, again, divided back, uh, printed in New York. Uh, this would be characterized as a roadside uh, uh, postcard, showing one of the inns or um, sometimes restaurants, diners, uh, that were along the busy routes. This is Route 22. You find them of Route 9 or Albany Post Road. Um, also, that's a conic uh, during this era. Okay, moving on to the linen postcards. This is from the 1930s to the 1940s. Um, whenever you see uh, greetings from, you know, Dallas or greetings from Orlando, uh, those are usually um, these linen cards, very brightly colored. Um, 
Uh, you can almost see the texture here on the top right of this Cafe Crescendo card. They're actually printed on linen and there's a texture to it. And Art Deco, um, 1940s aesthetics to them, uh, as I said, usually pretty brightly colored. The one on the right here is of the Trenton Diner. Gives a nice map on the bottom. There's always a description on the back. Um, and these are very collectible, the diner cards, interiors of stores, um, but the other ones are usually pretty more common and uh, less valuable than their uh, earlier versions, but still some value with these you know, beautiful graphics. Okay, we're going to move on to the Chrome era, which is about the 1950s to the present. These are the cards that you even see today on postcard racks and probably are familiar with. Uh, the left one is uh, the view of Mount Beacon in the 60s. Again, there's a description on the back, publisher down the middle. Um, the one on the right is a view from Newburgh over to Beacon. And um, these have become more popular recently, uh, mostly because uh, you can still look back from your own childhood and uh, remember these views yourself. So they're becoming more popular and uh, more valuable. You see a lot of uh, printed from um, businesses as almost their business calling card. Uh, those are usually the most valuable ones out of the Chrome era. And of course, don't forget to read the back of the cards. Uh, these are two cards from my collection. Uh, one is of uh, advertising for a car, and the other one is of the steamer Hendrick Hudson. Uh, but I didn't buy them for the front of the card. I bought them for the back. Uh, this one on the left gives a description of um, the Little Red Schoolhouse in Fishkill. Uh, it's on the corner of uh, uh, near a colored settlement called Baxter Town. Um, black and white children attend this school. So it gives a little description of um, a little tiny hamlet that was in the town of Fishkill, uh, which I don't have any views of, but it's nice to have a little description of the town. And the one on the right was postmarked from Poughkeepsie. And uh, this is one of the first cards I ever bought because of the back. And he writes, I am now on this thing, as in the boat on the front, riding up the Hudson River. I keep hoping we'll hit something and sink, but so far nothing has happened. Yesterday, a bomber hit the Empire State Building and I watched it burn. I want some excitement today. So it gives you a little bit of a piece of history that this person uh, witnessed themselves. And I think that's pretty cool. And even has it dated, so you can look up this date and see uh, that the date before uh, the bomber actually hit the Empire State Building. So that is it for me on the history of postcards in the area. Uh, David, that was excellent. Very, very informative. Um, I'm going to uh, turn it over now to uh, Diane from the Beacon Historical Society. So, uh, Diane, uh, can you come up? Yeah. David, oh, presentation was amazing. I always learn something new. Thank you, David. And I also saw new cards never seen before. Oh, how do I get to... There it is. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, re I'm representing the Beacon Historical Society, and I've been collecting postcards for over 40 years. I uh, started at the Metropolitan Postcard Show with Walter Lord, who, who is the author of The Sinking of the Titanic, and got my caught the bug, never stopped. So at the Beacon Historical Society, uh, we have over 900 postcards. And we've gotten them through donations, tag sales, estate sales, uh, eBay. And we also swap with other institutions. Uh, for example, we had some Newburgh cards that they didn't have and vice versa, and we, and we swap them. Uh, we store our postcards in um, the albums in acid-free sleeves, and we sort them by topic. And we collect, I don't know if you can make your view a little in your, in the upper right corner, if you can minimize the people, you can see the images better. Um, we, we collect every possible view. Here's just a, a sample of a page of the country, country club. 
Uh, we collect beacon, Madawan, Fishkill Landing, and neighboring communities. Um, we have yet to digitally archive our collection. I know uh, another person's going to talk about digital archives later, but we will begin this year. Um, how we use postcards, uh, certainly for social media, for event planning, uh, storytelling uh, on our fa Facebook and, of course, on our website. Uh, we have a monthly newsletter that we uh, use postcards to tell stories. And, of course, in the books that we have produced, Historic Beacon, Beacon Revisited, and Along Mount Beacon Incline, Postcards are an important part of the storytelling. And if you haven't created an Arcadia book, uh, that might be some concept that your organization can consider. Uh, we also use uh, postcards in storytelling. So on our website under Explore, I have a page, for example, of lost landmarks of beacon and postcards. This was an article that was in the Highlands Current, and then I just put it into our website, but you can do that with any, any storyline. Um, as for researchers, when researchers come on any particular topic, I always pull out the postcard album. And here's an example of a research fellow from the Thomas Cole site, uh, lear learning about industries. So I pulled out the postcard collection, looked under industries and, and there she is. And how we display them in many different ways. Uh, fortunately, we have really beautiful glass display cases and, um, and it's pretty dark room. So we're able to use the actual postcard in a plastic sleeve on an easel behind a locked glass case. We also integrate postcards into um, panels such as the ones that we did for the um, Jewish experience in Beacon and here's example of a postcard here and another one here. So we use them in display panels. We also did um, part of the Hebrew Alliance project. Uh, we created a walking tour app uh, for local Jewish businesses that were once located along Beacon's Main Street. And uh, not only is the advertisement, which is what you see, has a postcard here, but many of the images, when you click on these sites, use postcard images to tell the story. One of the things that we do every year is we invite four or five postcard collectors uh, to a panel. And we just, each, each um, collector brings five different postcards and shares something about them, like their favorite, their funniest, their weirdest. Um, their first card and anything that you know it's up to them i do give them a criteria sheet in which to use um, and it's a way to bring in um, an interest in the collecting of postcards into the field and um, educate people about the different kinds of postcards where you get them how you store them etc and that's a lead up up to our postcard show that we do every year. This year will be Saturday, June 10th at St. Joachim School Hall in Beacon. And you can see a picture of this past um, season's postcard event. Um, we send out a postcard uh, that we actually put at the postcard shows using a postcard image, of course. One of the activities that we provide at the Historical Society is a lesson for second to third graders about Beacon's post office. And I think this is a, a perfect thing that anyone can do it for their own historical society is develop a lesson on the history of your post office. In our case, obviously, FDR had a, a major role in the building of it. Um, so we talk about FDR's impact on the community. Uh, we also talk about postcard history as a form of communication and why postcards are important in our collection. And then at the end, the children make and take a postcard. And I, the two books that I use, I have on the left side, the stamp of FDR and FDR in the post office. And I think for Dutchess County, it's a, a no brainer to create an easy lesson related to your post office and postal history. And here's um, two, and then at our historical society, I have a little basket where I have postcard making materials 
And when kids do visit us, we pull out the basket and they can create their own postcard. And the girl on the left wrote, um, dear friend, I'm sorry, it took so long to write. I went to a, a historical society and saw a cute dollhouse, which was really charming. And then the little boy on, on the right uh, was at, actually at the postcard show. So I set up a table and I have postcard making materials there as well. And let me unshare. And the last thing I wanted to just bring up is on a personal level, um, as a postcard collector, I wrote a book called Cocktails Across America, um, a postcard view of cocktail culture in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And it's just a way to use um, postcard imagery and to tell a story. So just I don't know how well you'd see it in the book. But um, the idea is you look at postcard um, themes or patterns and you can do that with your own collection and you know laying out your collection or looking at um, your albums or your box of postcards and finding patterns to tell stories. Uh, so it can be a lot of fun and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Diane, that was excellent. Uh, I'd like to bring up uh, Mike Frazier now from uh, Rhinebeck, Michael. Okay, thank you, Craig and thanks. Diane, so many great ideas there that you're doing down in Beacon. Uh, and wow, David Turner, very impressed. We've had him uh, do two programs for the Rhinebeck Historical Society uh, last year and the year before on uh, Dutchess County postcards, and they were very popular uh, Zoom programs. Uh, and he's going to be doing another one. Uh, Craig, it, it turned out that we scheduled it at the same time that uh, Clinton is doing the uh, the murder uh, program <laughs> this coming Friday evening, and we apologize for the conflict, but maybe if the weather is bad or somebody hasn't been able to reserve a seat for German, they'll uh, zoom in for David Turner's uh, discussion of stereo optic views, which is what he's going to do, talking about the Industrial Revolution in Dutchess County. But I'm here to talk about what we do with postcards. So let me uh, share our screen here and uh, <clears throat> pull up some items. Uh, okay, so I want to start by showing Yeah, there we go. So this is the uh, Rhinebeck Historical Society website. And if you uh, go to the home screen, uh, you will have uh, one of the choices is to go to our archives. And one of the choices under there is postcards. And we've got a, uh, a new member of our board, Bonnie Wood, who has been very enthusiastic about redoing our website. We're very happy with what she's up to. And what she's done on this portion of our website is simply to pick uh, half a dozen, uh, it's, it's just showing half a dozen postcards. I'm having a little trouble here getting this to uh, load. I'm not sure what the problem is, but uh, she's picked two sites. Uh, the Rhinebeck Diner, and uh, hmm. okay, so they're finally coming up. And the other is the uh, Dr. Miller Schuyler House site, both of which were quite popular uh, in the uh, 30, 40 years ago, uh, and even earlier than that. And she's uh, having some fun by by picking these groups. Uh, here's one. It's uh, on Dr. Miller's estate. There's a waterfall there. And the writing uh, on the back here is uh, having a lazy week up here, a good place for a murder. Um, hopefully nothing like that happened there that I'm aware of. Um, but you'll notice that we, we scan 
uh, both the front and the backs of the postcards. And what we do is they're scanned initially at 600 DPI TIFFs, um, but we put them together as a single JPEG uh, and it'll make more sense. Uh, you know, this, this portion of the website is really just for a little bit of fun, but and not really for serious research. But we do that. Uh, let me go to the uh, rhinebeckhistory.org is the website where all the historical organizations in the town of Rhinebeck, including the Museum of Rhinebeck History, Rhinebeck Historical Society, and a bunch of others of us post our material. On the lower right hand corner of that website are some choices, uh, one of which is our actual postcard collection where we do uh, describe what they're all about and uh, actually show there are 497. We've scanned all of them and posted them here. And this is the kind of information that we put on this database, which is uh, searchable. Uh, and um, we try to, we don't have a lot of information here. We try to uh, repeat if anybody has written anything on the back of the postcard, that'll be there. So a sample um, <clears throat> postcard, the waterfalls are always very popular. Uh, and this is one in the uh, pre splits period. I was fascinated by Davis description of the different categories. I had never really thought about them that carefully, but uh, so um, as I said, we have uh, you know one of one of the things that we do um, because of I'm sure the same kind of space limitations that most of you have, and and this is not just. Uh, Postcards, of course, don't take up an awful lot of room, but they do take up some room. And we also have a lot of folks very interested in local history who may have a substantial collection and who are eager to share it, but who want to keep it. And for both the space reasons and to allow people to keep material, uh, what we do is have them sign not a deed of gift, giving the material to us, but a deed of gift of scans. And what that's all about, um, I don't know if I can. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, I think. I have lost <clears throat> what I wanted to show you was our actual deed of gift of scans, but uh, I don't think it's open right here. But in any event, um, what that does is the, the person signs an agreement in this deed of gift of scans, allowing us to scan the material, allowing us to do whatever we want with the scan, including posting it online. Um, and we return the individual items uh, to the owner. And however the owner wants that collection to be described, uh, we indicate when we post the item that it's courtesy of, of that particular individual or however they want to want to have it phrased. Um, so that's that's about it. And uh, I will go back to you, Craig. Okay, very good, uh, Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, un, uh, unshare. Okay. Okay, and uh, I'm up next. So let me share. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Town of Clinton. Um, we obtained uh, a few years ago. We obtained uh, a collection of uh, Clinton postcards from uh, one of our members, and uh, she wanted to keep the cards, so we scanned them. And it was a good thing that we did because 
during the move, a uh, house move during a few years ago, the, the, her collection got lost. So, but at least we have the uh, images now that we've used uh, on our on our uh, exhibits. We also get loans uh, from uh, collectors, as Mike said. Uh, we scan them and return them. We don't have a uh, uh, a document, uh, but uh, that's a good idea. Uh, we also get images off eBay, and we recommend that if you do that, that you get permission from the seller to uh, scan the card. And the benefit to the seller is that it increases the uh, public interest in uh, postcards so that they might get uh, more interest in uh, purchases. So it's a win-win situation. As far as cataloging them, the um, postcards uh, we preserve in uh, albums. We recommend uh, the uh, sleeves that uh, Diane mentioned. Uh, also put them in file folders uh, with the sleeves. Uh, the images themselves are stored in an archive and uh, important that you that that be backed up in case uh, there is a uh, hardware error and you might lose everything. So very, a backup is very, very important. Uh, we catalog them by the town or village uh, rather than by uh, topic. The um, display and images uh, are taken from, excuse me, the Displayed images have been used twice in two major exhibits, first in 2012, and then seven years later, because of the popularity of the first show, we redid it. We have about 1,500 images on about uh, 50 uh, foam boards. Uh, each exhibit, we have a one-page history at the entry, giving a brief history of the postcards, as well as uh, credits to the collectors that have loaned us the, those images. We also have three of those boards uh, focused on our town of Clinton. Uh, and our, our suggestion is if you do a Dutchess County exhibit, that your particular town be highlighted with a series of uh, boards and, and images. Uh, the way we do this is to put uh, four postcards on a uh, scanner plate uh, at 300 DPI. And this way, the color print, we can save some money. We uh, cut them up. Uh, full size, three and a half by five and a half. And uh, we use spray adhesive to uh, mount them onto the uh, poster board. Uh, we'd like to, everyone to know that uh, our exhibit is portable. It's on the Dutchess County uh, towns and villages, and it is available for a free loan in case a uh, society would like to uh, show, uh, attract people to a postcard show and maybe add their own as well to what we can offer as part of the free loan. Um, let's see. We've used, as I said, the um, postcards in our exhibits, but also when we do a special exhibit such as our Clinton landmark uh, sites, uh, postcard images are, are used for that. Uh, I wanna relate uh, one of our big success stories. Our, our first show in 2012, we borrowed the um, collection from Michael Gordon, who is the owner of Zimmer Brothers Jewelry. We heard heard about this collection, so I approached Michael and said, you know, it would be possible to borrow for a show in Clinton. So, gee, I'd love to do that, but I unfortunately, I had a flood in my uh, basement of the store. Uh, the uh, poster boards were stored against the wall, and the water rose to the level of the bottom two uh, cards, uh, pretty much uh, destroying them. So uh, we worked a deal. We told Gordon that we'd be willing to restore whatever cards are restorable. And uh, we'd like to scan the, the good cards and then return all the cards to you and then post the uh, scans in our exhibit. And that worked out very well. So we actually saved a, a large portion of his uh, 1500 cards. We saved about 150 or 175 uh, postcards by um, careful restoration. Uh, very great uh, success. Uh, we've also successfully uh, swapped images with other collectors. Uh, for instance, one of our shows, a fellow came up uh, from Upton Lake. He had his own personal collection. A lot of cars that we didn't have, by the way, we include Upton Lake as a nearby uh, part of uh, Clinton. A lot of Clinton history happened at Upton Lake. So uh, we swapped images to help fulfill help fill up each other's uh, collection. That worked out very well. 
Uh, the big thing for us is we want to get our name of the Clinton Historical Society out in Dutchess County. And this uh, postcard exhibit two times was very well uh, publicized by the Northern Dutchess News, Southern Dutch News, Beacon Free Press, which is all one paper. And uh, the uh, editor was very anxious to get our story out there. So this was great publicity for the organization and also obviously helped with our attendance. People came from uh, Southern uh, uh, Dutchess County up to us. The other uh, thing we have is that uh, when we do have a show, we've had high attendance both times. In fact, we've made a little bit of money in the uh, donation jar that we have next to the entry. Uh, we have a uh, sign in book so we know where people are coming from. And we've gotten great uh, either written or verbal uh, kudos on uh, our, our collection and the way we um, exhibited them. So postcards have been very, very successful for us and we continue to collect and we will continue to uh, exhibit. And that's all I have. So next we are going to be um, with uh, Bill Jeffway from the uh, County Historical Society. Bill? Okay, thank you. I don't have too much to say because we don't do a lot, but I thought I'd share uh, in the spirit, but I'm using a different laptop. So just let's hope this all works. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, kind of. I just wanted to show you, we have, uh, so, you know, uh, Rhinebeck does it properly, uh, front and back, and then it's really documented and organized and David Turner does it properly. But if, uh, what I wanted to do is just start to get some a sense of what we had for postcards at the Historical Society, and I focused on Poughkeepsie. And I have a um, sensitive paper scanner, and I don't know, this maybe was crazy, but, uh, you know, set it to its carefulest settings, and I was able to have these run through um, one after another on its own, scanning the front and the back. And so what you're seeing here is the version that is the uh, minimal effort version. And then I simply on a Google uh, uh, shared drive, organized them by categories. So this was a, a really a low, uh, a low effort, low energy effort to just kind of get start to look at what we're doing. So automated scanning front and back, and then just putting it on uh, a Google Drive. But I did, for a while, we tested just offering views into these postcards. Uh, in our, we have a members portal where if you're a paid member, you get certain get to do certain things. And it did kind of seem to be popular that people could just kind of go in and poke around. And one of the things I've always been concerned about, though, is um, Oh, uh, not getting, uh, I got to show you an example. I, right here on Rivers and Bridges, see this beautiful little picture? I put this up and within a couple of weeks, it was for sale as a printed item on some website. I talked to David Turner about this. You know, you, you put your, once you put your things up, you're basically saying it's, it's fair game for everybody. So I was kind of, I don't know that the guys become a millionaire selling prints of this, but it is kind of shocking to see. And I know it was mine because it has the little X on the guy's head in the writing. So you just have to be aware that when you put it up, uh, anything can happen from that. And we started talking about, you know, David talked about some of the more rare uh, postcards. And then of course, there are some that there are just billions of, right? So we, Maybe it's as we go forward, it's good to think of, you know, what are the kind of broad ones that maybe we make less of a fuss about? And what are the, uh, what are the ones that maybe we can uh, share more easily? And then just while we were talking, I created, I wanted to just put this forward as a possible way to go uh, that we'll talk about later. But um, one of the things I wondered about was creating a, simple map like uh, Google Maps 
uh, I just I literally just did this while we were speaking. I, and you could you could pinpoint views, you could create layers for different years, and everybody could kind of contribute. It's so easy to, and we could kind of collectively as a community populate uh, views of the county with postcards. But again, we'd probably want to orient ourselves to those postcards that are a little more well known, not the rare ones, or if they're rare, then put um, appropriate markings or requests. So I wanted to just put that out there. And then also, um, I just want to share a little more sophisticated map. The other thing I've been thinking about we could do with postcards is kind of hot house a uh, sorry not quite the right one hot house a, a, like a corner or an area or a building of importance and i did this uh not with postcards but with a photograph this is like an in-depth view of this photograph the intersection of garden liberty and uh mechanic street and uh, just looking at it from different angles, from different points over different years. And I was thinking we could do this using postcards with um, things of interest. Like I was thinking of the walkway, the bridge, for example. We could just, we could hothouse one, say we're gonna find all the postcards we can find about the walkway over the Hudson Railroad Bridge, uh, and then do something like that. So it was just another idea where instead of a map with a lot of different areas, you have a map that kind of focuses on one and picks apart one area in, in particular. So that's for later. And that's it. Okay, Bill, thank you very, very much. And uh, David, you're next. And please talk about watermarks. <laughs> Bill? Yeah, no. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just want to share a little bit about my collection, how I how I uh, organize it myself. So most of my collection are in albums like this. This is uh, my Hopewell Junction East Fishkill uh, Fishkill album. Um, I just want to point out one thing that I do have postcards in my album, like this one right here. It's of a house. It's postmarked from Hopewell Junction. I don't know where this house is. Um, if it still stands or anything like that. But I keep it in my collection because you never know when you're gonna come across something um, that'll give you uh, a location for it. Uh, so it's always important to you know, hold on to the views that you might not have identified yet because you never know along, uh, down the line when you're gonna be able to find out exactly where it is. And that's happened to me. The more I learn about Dutchess County history, the more I am able to identify different uh, photographs <laughs> like that. So it's always important not to discard something because you don't know where it is. Uh, for my own postcard stock that I sell, I keep everything in boxes. Uh, they're all categorized. Here's is my New Jersey stuff. It's all categorized by county and then by town. It's a lot of work. You need a lot of geography uh, expertise in it, it seems. And each card is put into its own plastic sleeve. Um, these are, you know, archival sleeves. You can get about a hundred of them for about three dollars and fifty cents. They last about, um, I would say, about twenty years, and then they need to be replaced. Uh, but this is a good way to protect your cards. Uh, people can touch them. Then, you know, you don't really want to have a, a card where uh, people are putting their hands on them. All our hands are have a little bit of oil on them, and that can get uh, deposited onto the card. So it's always good to keep them in some sort of plastic uh, archival, preferably uh, just to protect them. Uh, moving on about watermarking, I can probably share my screen again. I talked about this when I was giving the presentation, um, but let's go back up to here. So you can see for most of my images that I, I use, I put uh, the David Turner collection um, I've had an issue in the past, especially with my eBay items uh, or things that I would post on Facebook. Facebook is notorious for this. Uh, you put up an image and the next day I see um, the, it copied and um, somebody selling it as a reproduction on eBay. Um, it doesn't devalue, I don't feel it devalues my collection at all, 
but um, it is a little bit frustrating when I share something that people take advantage. Uh, so I usually put um, either David Turner Collection, my eBay name, um, or the website that I use on Facebook. Um, I've asked, it happens a lot in these uh, group or these town groups on Facebook. Um, I know Beacon Historical Society is having an issue with it now that people are taking images off their website, uh, posting them on Facebook themselves, and almost pretending as if it's their own collection. I don't know if it's for some sort of clout or they just like likes and the comments and things like that. Um, but it's happened in almost all of the town groups on Facebook now. Um, I just like people giving uh, credit to the person that has either done the research on this item or um, you know has taken the time to share it with everyone and then other people taking advantage, which I don't particularly uh, agree with. Um, another way that I share uh, things on, let me share again, excuse me, um, desktop. I have my own page on uh, Facebook and Instagram. It's called Hudson Valley Revisited. It's the way that I uh, share a lot of my images of the Hudson Valley. So, oh, it's going to make me sign in, which I don't know my sign in. You can share that I use postcards, um, uh, an old, old view and a view of it today to compare um, how things have changed or not changed over the past hundred years. So the one on the left is of uh, Fishkill and then I have Red Hook, Germantown up in Columbia County. And you can see that I watermark each of these images, Hudson Valley Revisited image. Um, that way that if somebody does want to share it somewhere else or take the image, then at least um, people know that where it came from. Um, I do have people that try to edit out my watermarks and everything like that, but even if they take the picture, post it somewhere else, pretending it's their own collection, at least there's something to say that, uh, you know, who did the work and all the research for it. Um, as with collecting myself, uh, I've been collecting for about 20 years now, uh, so I have a lot of different avenues to find cards. I know a lot of the postcard dealers in the area now, so um, people know what I collect and they find things for me as well. Uh, I go to postcard shows. There's a lot of them in the area. There's one uh, up in Albany. Uh, that's usually in uh, early December. Uh, there's the Kingston show, which is starting up again after COVID. That's in the early spring and um, early fall. Uh, and then, of course, we have our Beacon show that is every year in June, which is becoming more and more popular. Uh, there's the big show down in New York City. And, of course, the largest show in the country is in York, Pennsylvania, which draws almost 100 dealers in millions and millions of cards. So it takes a lot of digging and a lot of uh, searching, um, but you can always find a gem everywhere. And usually in a lot of these uh, local estate sales, you can find a lot of photographs and postcards. They might not advertise it, but everyone got these types of mailings and things like that. So uh, if there's a, an estate sale and somebody was a hoarder, oh, that is my bread and butter because that means they kept all their mail, they kept all of their postcards, and all you have to do is search through the drawers and uh, you might find a gem. Um, as with uh, collecting, it's getting a little bit harder. Uh, a lot of these uh, images uh, are already tucked away in people's collections. Uh, you no longer see a lot of these original postcard albums um, up for auction or for sale anymore. A lot of it is now these secondary collections, people that collected their own town or a topic. And uh, that's really what you come across today. Um, postcard prices have gone up a lot as well. The value of these things have gone up a lot as it's becoming more scarce. Things that I used to see um, over and over and over again when I first started collecting have become scarce and have gone up in value. Uh, especially these real photo cards, these unique images, um, they've gone up, um, I don't know, 10 times as much as when they first started. I used to buy a real photo card for about Three or three to five dollars when I first started collecting. Now you can see them going for hundreds of dollars. Uh, it really depends on the topic and the image itself. So uh, as these things become more uh, valuable and expensive, it's even more important to really protect these items and uh, um, show how uh, the public response to them is uh, growing as well. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, different presentations with postcards. Again, showing the then and now. People really enjoy that. Um, seeing how things have changed, um, showing the tiny hamlets, which I really uh, focus my collection on, 
um, showing how rural life has changed, especially in Dutchess County. We used to be a really agrarian county, and now that we're more uh, suburban in nature or country homes, uh, it's nice to show um, what these places used to look like. And people seem to really enjoy it, and I get a lot of uh, positive response from it. And um, I'm going to throw it back to you, Greg. Okay, uh, very, very good, uh, David, as usual. Um, I think we're going to open up now to uh, questions and uh, answers. So anybody have a question that I'd like to pose to anybody on the panel? Uh, David covered watermarking. I think that's important. He mentioned that uh, shows are one source of uh, obtaining cards. Uh, you've heard other sources uh, from uh, local collectors. We found that uh, when we find one postcard collector, they know of other postcard collectors. So there's a kind of a, a group out there that uh, might be a fertile ground for you to find, especially uh, local uh, cards from uh, your, your area. Uh, we in Clinton have offered a... Uh, a road show with uh, ready to go uh, posters if you wanted to uh, have a show, see how that works out for you. So that's available, just contact me. Um, let's see, uh, anything else on postcards? Uh, co collaboration was mentioned by Bill where we might do uh, the, the um, Google um, Maps. So that's something we might uh, bring up in the, in the future and maybe Bill will give us in the future, some more details to how we could all collaborate on that. Uh, it would be worth Craig, our while. I, so. I, I think uh, Diane's had her hand up and Nan Greenwood also. I'm sorry, I don't see the their images, so I, I missed yeah, them. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured. <laughs> thank you very much. Go ahead, Diane. I, okay, thank you. Um, I had a couple of comments. First, um, I did, when we, when we do our postcard show, we sell we sell postcards that are not related to our collection so it's another it's another avenue for fundraising but we also get those cards by sending out in our newsletter to our members like hey if anybody has postcards you don't want anymore donate them to us and often in that collection we'll find some beacon cards but most likely they're you know niagara falls or bridges in madison county for example um, but we do we do sell those and that's something you could do also just have it at a table you know when your visitors come and you know put a, a reasonable price on them as a fundraiser uh i wanted to ask bill about uh where we can find that link to that that like one scene concept I, that was really intriguing oh yeah i i can uh i could share it yeah, I'd really like it's, to uh, Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing, this is old school, but um, when people would come into the historical society with postcards that they didn't want to give away, and this was before digitizing, uh, Bob Murphy used to make photo photocopies of them and we put them in the album. So we have placeholders of cards that we don't have yet. So um, that's another thing to consider. It's like, there's so many more cards that we don't have in our collection. As as an example, two of those Chrome cards that David Turner showed, we do not have those in our collection. So, you know, something to aspire to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who else um, is? If Nan I may, Greenwood. Yes. Okay, Nan. You know, you, you've seen these before, David's calendars that he produces annually. Uh, the Millbrook history ca calendars that are underwritten by the Bank of Millbrook, but we regularly incorporate uh, postcards from the collection in these calendars, which is another way to display them. This, for instance, cover picture from the uh, current 2022 calendar is a postcard. Uh, this is a postcard. There are a number of them in this year's calendar taken from postcards. And of course, there's always an appeal in the back of the calendar saying, please look at your collections, share them with the Historical Society archives, mm -hmm. either donating outright or allowing 
the society to scan the images so that it will be added to the collection and perhaps in a future year one of your donations will make it into the calendar and what we've had happen is the calendars have been sent to relatives that now live in other parts of the country so let's say alabama and when that person ends up dying the relatives in alabama come across postcards and they don't know what to do with them so because they've collected the calendars uh, we've gotten postcard collections from all around the country that have come back to the historical society because of the catalyst of the the uh, calendar so that's a byproduct we didn't even think about 27 years ago when we did the first calendar we thought oh that would be it but they have become so popular that every year people wait to see them and the bank has underwritten the distribution creation and distribution of them David how do you uh, catalog your postcards by topic or town or what Allison can probably answer that question but yes it's by topic largely but Allison Meyer is on the call I think she might be yeah. able to. Allison uh, yes I actually I don't can everyone hear me <clears throat> okay. yes I, I actually don't have a, a direct answer to that <clears throat> I'm sorry um yeah I, yeah I I haven't worked with the postcard collection in our archives okay just asking Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Mary Ellen uh, what does Pleasant Valley have I yeah we um well we're kind of scattered actually Dieter Friedrichsen I don't know if a lot of you know him he's our secretary he has huge uh, Pleasant Valley and Salt Point collection and um and we have some scattered throughout the um the mill site but they're not really organized in any kind of good way. Um, I just wanted to say what we did last year was for the bicentennial, um, we made um, um, eight four by six um, photos. We scan, well, actually we didn't scan them in. Um, I took them to the copy shop and out of a lot of the postcards and they sold really well we sold quite a few of them and you know of course we didn't advertise them as postcards we advertised them as photos of old postcards but um I was going to ask you guys we have a like just an old cheap printer what like we would love to buy a scanner what what are minimum requirements to do these copies ourselves like when looking for a printer a scanner Bill, do you want to help there? Oh, me? Oh, Bill? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Well, I guess it depends what you want. Maybe we can share our experience, but I'll... Um, sorry. If, it depends what you want. If, if you want minimum, like, cheapest, then that's one thing. Uh, I mean, you could do that. Rhinebeck does much more. Can we have Rhinebeck answer? And I'll, I'll think, try to get something. Sure. Uh, yeah, as Bill is alluding, I did that quicker than I thought. This is what of, I use. This is the uh, sensitive paper scanner thing. Oh. Yes. That's you know, not we, minimum. That's for the convenience of being able to copy sensitive things easily. So it's not it's not minimal in that sense. A lot depends on how much detail how much that original postcard is worthy of a really detailed scan we do our scans at 600 dpi tiffs which most uh, uh just any scanner is going to be able to do um in order to uh i mean that's that's a great way to save them for your collection uh and then if you're going to actually post them online it's a matter of converting uh those large a 600 dpi scan takes quite a bit of memory and even though a postcard is is relatively small in size so what we do is then reduce those to uh to a smaller size that won't take forever to open up on on a uh on a screen, uh, for you know, if you posted it online, we we try to keep it uh, so that it's no more than than two uh, 
two megabytes uh, on the, uh, you know, on whether it's a JPEG or a PDF you're creating. Uh, I may be speaking Greek here to you. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think just getting started, it, frankly, the least expensive scanner is going to be able to do a good job for you and just take a look and see how you feel about what has come out of that and uh, you know i've i've spent some time with pleasant valley's historical society and uh would be glad to spend more time with you to talk about that uh, and to actually do some trial runs with you if you like there are so many advances in scanning i think that uh, you have a lot of choices that are good. The challenge is probably who's going to have the time to do it. That that has for us been more of the challenge than you know, uh, because I still think Rhinebeck's the model in terms of like having a consistent way of documenting. Uh, but we haven't had that hasn't made yeah, it I mean, the priority. It, yeah, it's it is as Bill says it it is very time consuming if you're trying to do the documentation. Um, you know, we probably made the mistake a long time ago when we had more volunteers who had more time available to think that it was important to do that kind of documenting and we haven't been able to get away from that. <laughs> uh, but. Kathy uh, Spears, uh, can you tell us about Stanford? Yeah, uh, thank you. Go ahead. Have basically two collections. One is the society's collection, and then we were uh, given a collection from someone who moved out of town. Um, when we took over the society, we got a hold of Greater Hudson Heritage Network, and um, someone came up to the post office and evaluated the collection. And based on what they told, you know, what they recommended, um, we photocopied all the cards, put them in a binder. The original cards are each in an individual archival sleeve in um, the proper box and they're filed in the fireproof um, file cabinet. And then beyond that, we're fortunate that we have a glass plate collection, actually several, and uh, many of the postcard pictures are glass plate negatives as well. So all those negatives have been scanned in. So. Um, so we have the collection, both digital, basically, of the postcards, the original photo, and then um, we have the original card. And we have everything okay. inventory that you can go from other to find the picture or the card. Thank you very much, uh, Val. How about Dover? Valerie, can you hear me? I guess not. I, I, I didn't realize I was still <laughs> muted. Uh, we haven't really done anything with uh, too much with postcards, but so I wasn't really planning to uh, log on today because I'm beset with other things, but I figured I better learn a couple things so that maybe we can get involved with it. And that's been a very good, uh, a very good uh, topic. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, open discussion. Have I missed anybody? Any town not, not reporting here? Okay, oh, sorry, Ed. <laughs> thank That's all right. You. Milton. Thanks. thanks very much. Um, first of all, I want to thank the presenters for uh, this program today. This is really very informative and uh, prompts me to realize I need to become more familiar with our postcard collection, <laughs> but it was really great. Um, David, I had a question for you. I live in Millerton, and when you were showing the Millerton Hotel, if I recall correctly, you said that uh, you showed a postcard of someone who had written it, and you had several postcards by that person. If my recollection is correct, I'd be curious as to who the person was. Um, he doesn't give his name. Oh. He only uh, refers to himself as F. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get some more images of him. So I showed you the Millerton Hotel. This is the view of, you know, the old railroad station right. in right. Millerton, also signed yeah. by F here. 
And he writes on it, this is where I expect to take the train from Albany, uh, have decided to use the Boston South Station instead. So he, it's just interesting that this one, I don't know, person that visited Millerton, I don't think he's from there, uh, uh, might have been a traveling salesman, but um, he um, always just wrote a little bit of a description of the town every single time he sent a car. That's very cool. It's funny. Well, very, yeah, we, we'll, we'll look for F and we'll see if we can have something of our own, but that's, that's terrific, thanks. It's okay, just, Any, go ahead. anybody else have other things to uh, add before we go to the next open discussion? Greg, I, I think Arnold uh, had something to say a moment ago. You'll have to unmute yourself, Arnold. No, I am unmuted. I'm just waiting. Okay. Patiently. So um, I can attest for how expensive the cards are because I bought up a, a, the Wawarsin station card, the, the first Wawarsin station card from David Turner for $54. <laughs> that came back to bite me in the butt when I was trying to bid on another one of his cards. And he said, what are you talking about? I sold the other one for $54. I said, I know I bought it. <laughs> but um, and, and I do have to reach out to because he has more of my station cards. But my question is, is what was that that website that you would that we were talking about? Pay Lee? How do you spell that? Uh, it's spelled. Let me check out on it right now. It's spelled P L A Y L E dot com. So play Lee dot com. Oh, they, okay. they used to sell postcards on that. It used to be like an eBay type of thing. Uh, but they stopped selling, but it's just kind of a little bit of a resource on um, postcards. And Thank uh, you. a good way of identifying the or dating those real photo cards. Okay, I'm going to uh, close the discussion. Uh, can and, I just add that sure. uh, Bob Bogdan's book on real photo postcards has a great section in the back about dating real photo postcards. And also the um, oh the uh, the library in Chicago, I can't think of the name of it, has the uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the linen. <laughs> Who's the linen, big linen production? What's that? Tyke cards? Yes, that's right. They have the Kurt Tyke collection and their website has a good dating system for the linen postcards for, for Kurt Tyke. Okay. Um, reaching the end, uh, I'd like to open up the discussion. Uh, does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss or announce? No. Okay, I'm going to say uh, thank you very much for our panel. This has really been informative. We had a lot of requests to have this uh, session recorded for people who could not attend today. So it is going to be available through a bill, and uh, Bill will give us the uh, link uh, sometime. And uh, this has been, I think, really productive, and I, I hope that uh, some societies can take advantage and maybe increase their membership and attendance uh, through the use of vintage postcards. And of course, all of us are available for a consultation. And uh, we appreciate uh, uh, the interest that uh, you have. Uh, so uh, is there anything else anybody would like to add before we close? Uh, okay, then uh, I'm going to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. And uh, we will see you next year. Have a good year. Bye-bye. Thank you as well. Thanks, Craig. Uh, thank Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy Bye. holidays.